Welcome, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church Bible Study. I don't do a lot of preliminaries because, you know, we do have uh, limited time. So just know that you're appreciated and I'm grateful. Share with a family member or a friend uh, that this is available. And I uh, would love for you to join and share with us. I'm happy today because I've got on my Next Gen t-shirt. And uh, if you'd like one, you can request it online. And I believe they can make that possible for you. And uh, I thank God for our next gen and for all of you. Psalm 74 uh, is known as a community lament. Uh, and I'll say more about what lament means as we go through this, because we've talked about personal laments. That's an individual and the situations that they were going through in life. But this 74th uh, division of the psalm, as well as 79, and there's some others, but specifically 74, uh, approaches God from a community perspective, that there is a community crisis and uh, they go directly to that crisis. Now, I, I, as I worked through this, uh, I wanted to go through verses 1 through 23, but in working through it again, I may need to start at verse 12. I'm going to do some preliminary things. And then I may need to just start at verse 12 and do verses 12 uh, through 17 and then come back and uh, seek to put uh, it in perspective. And hopefully we can do that in the time that's allotted to us. Psalm 74, there are 23 verses. It is known as a communal lament, communal community lament. Think in terms of a public disaster, something that has a community impact as COVID-19. This is the case of Psalm 74. There is something that has had a community impact. Psalm 74 speaks, seeks and speaks to give consideration from a religious dimension of this public event of loss of property, of light, and of life. Uh, Psalm 74 gives a religious um, emphasis and insight into public disasters uh, mm -hmm. and challenges that confront a community. It is uh, more general than a personal disaster. Uh, this public disaster, as expressive in Psalm 74, is not unlike our own, uh, with wars, droughts, uh, hurricanes, famines, plagues, and yes, pandemics. What is uh, an honest religious response uh, or a balanced response to a pandemic or a plague. Are you listening? What is a balanced approach uh, from a public perspective uh, as it relates to responding to a crisis in the community? Uh, Walter Brueggemann, and I've quoted him and I'll probably quote him throughout this time of Bible study, says, it is, it is stunning to think that the prayer of this kind might indeed be the point of entry into the larger world of faith where the Lord is the Lord of nations, where the Lord of the nation governs, where the Lord of the nations governs. Put, pull that, where the Lord of the nations governs, the point of faith. Uh, work with this. Um, place of events in a private and public uh, nature uh, seek to nurture a maturing faith. I tried to mention that some Sunday about the necessity of a maturing faith uh, as we grow towards uh, maturity in the Lord Jesus Christ. An initial reading of Psalm 74 reveals a response to God by God's covenant people. Hold that. A response to God and or God's lack of responding to a personal or public situation. 
uh, believers. Uh, but please nail that down. This is not a group of persons who don't believe or have any relationship. This is a group of believers. They're having a seemingly challenging time with a lack of God's involvement in their disaster. Notice the sheep of his pasture, the apple of his eye. Uh, it seems like God is allowing God's enemies to uh, wreak havoc on the city of Jerusalem, destroyed, the walls are broken down, and the temple of God has been desecrated. Some are killed, and the poor and needy suffer only more during this time. Historically, this is 587 BC, and probably the Babylonian Empire who are the perpetrators of what's going on. God was totally aware of the situation and his enemies, and did not prevent the disaster. Are you listening? God was aware, but he did not prevent. Look carefully at verse number one, verse 74. Don't polish it, but, but just look at it. Uh, oh God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? No, no, notice the, the words, the, and, and I'll, I'll say it before I forget it. You notice the psalm didn't start off, praise to the Lord, oh, give thanks to the Lord, or oh, the Lord is good. No, no, no. It, it, and the phrase I like to use, it talks plain. Oh, God, why do you forget your people forever? And notice the context of the people. Uh, the sheep, notice, of your pasture. Remember the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Now we're the Lord's sheep, and now the Lord's sheep find themselves in a devastating, destructive situation. Also notice, as we work through this, uh, I want to uh, hurry uh, and look at the 23rd verse uh, as well. Uh, also notice that this disastrous situation still presides or persists at the end of this psalm. The, the, the mindset is still there. Look at the 23rd verse. Do not forget the clamor of your foes, the uproar of your adversaries that goes on continually. Again, this is no thank you, Lord. I know you heard my prayer. He, the, the, the writer representing this group seems to keep reminding God about Something that's not um, equitable, is that a good word? Something that doesn't seem fair? Or something that you just can't reconcile? That how can something like this be happening to God's people? The sheep of his pa Ah, How can you be in the pasture of God and still be devastated? And still have a pandemic? Mmm or still not be exempt from a hurricane, or a tornado, or a flood. Hello? This psalm, these communal psalms, push people of faith, can I talk plain with you? To be honest. And hear me when I say this. Uh, there are moments when it's not a praise the Lord moment. Mm -mm. There are moments on your Christian journey in, in maturing are not a thank you Jesus moment. There are moments when Jesus doesn't feed the hungry. There are situations where the sick are not healed and people die. Just being real with you from the 74th Psalm, which is a real psalm uh, for people who believe in God. This, this psalm uh, is about just people who are struggling in an unjust world who will raise questions about the goodness and the justice of God as their shepherd. 
quick outline, just quick outline. Uh, verses one and two, you can isolate verses one and two. The writer entreats God, uh, God's interposition, God's intervention into the community. Verses one and two, Lord, we need you, get involved in the community. Verses three through nine, I'll come back to this, depicts the desolation of the community, the disaster. When you look at verses three through nine, it's rather really, really graphic as to what they're going through. Verses 10 through 17, it's a hymn. Uh, pleads for former displays of God's power in the current crisis. Uh, Lord, I know you can if you don't. You listening? L Lord, I know you can. How do you know that? Because I know what you, what, I know, I know what you did before. Say, say, say with, with breath that. I know what you've done before. I know you can, but right now you aren't. <laughs> Am I making any sense to you? This is being honest. And so often, if I talk plain to us, Christians are not always honest with God about our real feelings of what we're going through. God can handle it. And Psalm 74 depicts cutting through all of the chase of praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, and, and just says, oh Lord, why? How long? Verses 18 through 23, this, they, they, there's a, 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 a question about the connection between God's honor and my deliverance, uh, or the group's deliverance, or the community's deliverance. Uh, Lord, Lord, you know, your honor is at stake. I want you to deliver me, but people are watching us who say we love you, and they see what we're going through, so your honor is at stake. And so you need to get us out of this for your honor's sake. And then verses 23, 19, 18 through 23, uh, is just an emphasis on God's goodness and God's mercy. It is of note that there, and I want you to notice this, there are at least 34 to 40 references to either the words in the King James Version of uh, the thou, thine, and thy, and in the New Revised Standard, the words you are your, in the King James Version and the New Revised, between those two, just depending on the translation, there are 36 to 40 references to God in the words of thee, thou, thine, or thy. This 74th Psalm is about God. Let me say it one way. They let me say it the way I, I think I need to say it as in teaching this. This psalm takes God to task for his seemingly lack of presence and or intervention with his own people, the sheep of his pasture. They couldn't understand it then, talk plain, and we really can't understand it now. And persons are scrambling now as to how do we talk about God with our own present crisis. Hmm? Uh, what's faith saying? What are faith leaders saying? What are prophets saying? In many cases, they're saying nothing uh, for fear or feeling that they, we, have to protect God's image. Now, I said I wanted to, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm changing my, my notes here from what I had planned, but, but as I work through this before coming out, I, I need to change that. I want to start uh, not at verse 1, but I want to start at verse 12. Because uh, I think in the middle of this, now remember all of the references that we talked about, and I didn't do that, but, but as you work to that, uh, notice verses uh, 1, 2, and 3 before you go to verse 12. And just look at the, 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 the your. Uh, oh God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Verse to remember your 
congregation um, uh, which you acquitted long ago, which you redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion where you came to dwell. Verse 3, direct your steps uh, to the perpetual ruins. Uh, the enemy has destroyed everything in the sanctuary. Verse 4, your foes. You see how that goes on? When you read this and begin to say, what in the world is going on? Now, if somebody talks to you and keeps saying, it's you, it's your, it's you, it's your. Now, you're listening to me? And just hear, it's you, it's your fault. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in this. If you hadn't said that, I wouldn't have said that. If you hadn't looked like that, I wouldn't have done like that. If you had gone out, you see, you see how, you see, it's blaming God. They're saying, God, this is you, 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 you can do something, but you didn't do anything about this situation. And again, this is not a group of non-believers or people just hanging out there with no current concern or compassion. They believe in God. They literally believe that they are the sheep of his pasture. And they are. But they find themselves at a moment and in a crisis where they don't feel like it. Because everything that they're going through is contradictory to everything that they know about God. Hmm? Uh, everything that they're going through. We, you know, we, we like to sing the song, Oh, Jesus will feed you when you're hungry. Jesus will feed you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, you know, is good. But don't you wait for the Lord to come and fix your plate. Hmm. Hello? Oh, being real. The 74th Psalm, I love it pushes people of faith to be real about current predicaments, crisis, crises, disaster, plagues, pandemics, wars, disaster, and destruction, where the poor and needy seem to suffer even more than they did before. I was pushed, I'm pushed to this 12th verse to sort of start in the middle of this because I think everything verses 1 through 11 um, comes to this point and then verses 18 and following are birthed out of this context. Uh, and, and really verses 12 through 17 that they tell us in the literary sense can really be a hymn uh, and it's beautiful scripture that I want uh, us to, um, I want to walk through this, these verses, verse by verse, and then if I have enough time, then I'll do some more with verses 1 through 11 and 18 through 23. But, but the core of this, uh, th th this uh, lament, uh, at the core of it, uh, is a staunch belief in God. Simply because I am struggling with what God is doing, that doesn't mean I don't have faith in God. Simply because I question why poor people suffer more during a crisis. Hello? I heard something alarming the other day that one out of the six people who die have died of this virus have been African Americans. And that one out of three who've been tested are African American. Disproportionate. And you know, everybody just depends on who you talk to where you get all the stats and stuff. And I don't want to spend a lot of time there. But maybe it's because our country has put African Americans in such dire straits in communities, in high rises, <laughs> uh, and where we have had a disproportionate uh, issue with health care and money for health care and et al. Maybe that has something to do with this. I'm going to leave that one alone. But in the middle of this song, I believe core. Uh, are verses uh, 12 through 17. Work with me now. Are you with me? Okay, you can't, you, have you caught up? Okay, you understanding? Okay, I see your hand, but I can't answer that right now. You'll have to send that in. <laughs> uh, I know you want to ask a question, and I, and I hope it raises questions as we go through this. And um, listen now. 
the, the psalmist is still, the writer is still writing out of this group context. Yet God, my King, is from of old, working salvation in the earth. Now, I, I don't like what's going on, but, but at the end of the day, you see that, I've got to stay right there. Yet God, my King, is from of old. He'll come back to that. And what is God doing? Working salvation in the earth. We don't always understand how, the hows and the whys, but by faith I've got to believe that all that we go through, we go through with the hope and aspiration from God that we will grow closer to him. What a tragedy, even greater than the tragedy that we have if we, as we go through this pandemic, that communities aren't closer together and have more respect and appreciation for one another. What a, what, a, what a real disaster it is for us to go through all of this and we become more divisive and divided and have more animosity and anger towards one another than we had before it. Hopefully that we will grow closer to one another and closer to God. That's what he means when he says, working salvation where? In the earth. Uh, the United States is in and a part of the earth. Verse 13. He comes now and almost seems to be reminding God. Is, just, just look at a photo album, album and you're looking with some photos with, uh, with one of the senior members of the house. And uh, our memories aren't always the sharpest and we don't remember everything. And you open this photo album and, and it says, you divided the sea by your might. Who did that? God. You broke the heads of the dragons in the waters. Uh, I understood that there were uh, evil or demons or sea monsters. That God did that. Uh, controlled them. You crushed the heads of the Levantine. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Lord, there's nothing on earth or in the earth or in the sea that you can't handle and haven't handled from the very beginning. Who did that? God. But now remember, it's the same person who has the issue in verse number one. Oh God, why do you cast me off forever? You, yeah, I feel like that, but I also know, verse 14, uh, verse 15, you cut open the springs and torrents. You dried up ever flowing streams. Ah, doesn't that sound like creation? The separation from the firmament from the firmament? God separated light from darkness. Hmm? Put the stars and the moon, the sun. God put that all there. God, you, you have power. Uh, as you go through what you go through, um, be honest with it. Be honest about what you're going through, but also recognize that God is still in control. Verse 16, yours is the day. Yours is also the night. That's right there, creation. He separated light from darkness and day and night. And God said, it was good. See, see, see him sitting down with his memory and saying, God, look at these pictures. <laughs> Look, look, Lord, look at this. What, what was that? Remember, you did that. You separated that. Uh, it seems to be. Uh, you, you established the luminaries and the sun. Uh, that means all those stars and galaxies that we haven't been able to count or find. You say God put them up there and God knows where they are and God knows what they're doing. He's, he's doing that to remind God. Wow. Of God's power. And wherewithal to do. Uh, 17. You fixed the bounds of the earth. <laughs> and made summer and winter. Who did that? He's saying God. Uh, you did that. You know. I'm not so sure. That he's reminding God. Of what God has done. Or whether he's doing that reminding himself during his time of crisis what God can do. <laughs> you, you know why you've had to go through some real challenges in life? 
that you couldn't get your way out of. And now when you look back, you realize that the Lord was working in your favor. That's why. So that when you go through the next one, you can open your mental photo album and say, you know, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is, is good. Um, the Lord is merciful and time is in his hands. Uh, you see what he's done there? Uh, that's that photo. And you must take that um, as you go through uh, this, um, th this psalm. And I want you to just stay focused on that. Let me just, I want to back up and do one, one other thing with this and uh, for, our, for our memory as we recognize God's presence in this world. God is still working in our favor. They're struggling, this group, um, and in this song specifically, because the temple has been destroyed, the place of worship. You may want to know the, ref know the reference in 1 Kings chapters 8 and 9, the building of the temple. Please note that reference, and you can read that later. 1 Kings chapters 8 and 9 about the building of the temple. This, this was a place where they knew uh, that God would meet them, where they, they did their sacrifices and their offerings and, and their worship uh, the, and everything. But the very place... The very stable place in their community, help me Lord Jesus, where they could go was desolated. <clears throat> the very place where they would gather for prayer and worship, they couldn't go for a season. Are you listening to the scripture? Destroyed. They couldn't go. And so they protest. And you notice in 74.2, again the word, remember your congregation, which you acquired long ago. Lord, I'm going through it, and I just need to talk out loud to you, because I'm, I'm really wrestling with what I'm going through. Persons have been deported, the needy and the poor are needier and poorer. The sick don't, still don't have health care. The, the, the hunger lines are getting long, the homeless is stretching. Don't know what we're going to do next week, but, but Lord, you've always provided for us. Remember, you see how he's talking to God? Lord, remember. Um, and, um, and be with us. I'm tired, I'm vexed, I'm struggling, but I trust you. It's honest. Persons will have moments when we feel abandonment by God. That's only honest. Um, we'll have moments of disappointment when we have catastrophic issues that seem to be overwhelming. And it's amazing as this writer says in this 22nd verse of this 74th chapter, rise up, O God, and plead your cause. Remember how impious and how the impious scoff at your name all day long. Rise up, O oh God. Rise up, O oh God. And so we must pray also with honesty and utmost integrity that God will rise up and reveal himself and that we will see the hand of God working in the favor of this global situation. The Lord loves you. You listening? Trust him. Talk honest to him and God will bless your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious moments in this wonderful, candid reminder in Psalm 74 about your divine presence in our lives. Strengthen us as we are walking into a mature faith. In Jesus' name, amen.